let's see system one data yeah see oil temp 217 right now it is not 217 so yeah we can uh eliminate that anyway that's just confirmation we're doing 42 46 we look good so far so what you're gonna do go ahead and switch the machine to off to that toggle and then go to service okay so now you're in service mode uh, what you want to do is you'll want to cycle to the left to the uh, digital outputs. I'm sorry, analog outputs, the AOs. You'll see the indicator up here in the corner. Yeah, so, uh, so on your left and right arrows, so you see DO, yeah. AOs right okay. there. So we're working on system one, and we need to open the feed and the drain valve. So the feed valve, you want to drive to 100, so type in 100. Hit enter. All right, you hear the valve doing its thing. Now go ahead and cycle down to you see drain valve. I'll go back up. Back up again. All right, drain valve 100. Enter. Perfect. Okay, now we'll give those a couple of seconds. We'll let those go all the way. Then we're going to unplug them because the moment you come out of service mode, they're gonna go back to fully closed. They, they rest at a closed position. So we can come over here next. You just, if you just listen for the sound, you'll hear them bottom out, which the drain valve just finished. So this one down here, this is your feed valve. That's your drain. Uh, it is important that we don't mix those up, but here's your harnesses coming way up to here. So, uh, let's go ahead, trace those out, and unplug those two valves on system one. What we've got going is we've got an oil sensor that is out of calibration considerably. So we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to get it changed out today. We're going to recover the system down. I've got, I planned for two days to do this. So today is just we're focused on doing the recovery and getting the sensor changed. And then I'll be worried about vacuum and charge and stuff probably tomorrow. Uh, it just kind of depends on how the day goes. Now we're going to start with trying to do just a straight recovery. It's a pretty cool day right now. It's not even 70 degrees out. So I'm, I'm thinking, hoping, hoping that we don't need the subcooler. If it starts getting to the point where it's giving us trouble, building too much heat in the tank, we'll hook the subcooler up and get it running. It won't be any big deal. So you've already done the drain valves. We're good to come out of service mode now. What you want to do next is you want to go to system switches. And this is just out of precaution. So system one is currently locked out on the safety, but go ahead and it's okay. So they've already got it in system off. That's what I was looking for. If you cycle down, you'll see system two on. So you got three options here. Uh, once we're done, we'll need to cycle this over to reset lockout and then it'll come back on for circuit one so we're already good there we're looking great so far so we're right at 80 pounds in chugging away with the recovery and we've not even began to build tank pressure whatsoever so like i said it's a real nice cool day the sun's starting to get on the tank which i'm a little nervous about but actually it's not impacting it near as much as i thought it would like i said it's just super cool today there's not much load out on the system and the building and uh yeah i didn't i didn't expect it to give us any trouble during the recovery this is 134 this is a ycif machine for those who are interested highly recommend go and look up the manual on it and check it out now so, something i noticed these are the sensors we were changing now we got an extra one for the customer to have on the shelf but they only gave us one dryer core and so yeah that's cool another thing you know changing that that uh, solenoid coil out I ordered just the coil but as it turns out they actually sent the whole valve so we'll just set the valve back as spare parts on site if they ever need it and we'll take the coil off of it and uh, just use that but that's okay you know little things like that happen 
All we need is that that coil right there. Come on, baby. There we go. These do thread go on just one way. So be mindful of that. Plugger. I was able. You can just pop these little caps off. This cap, I'm gonna I'm gonna replace the cap because that one's definitely got more out. All right, you can see our valve. It's gonna get under it. Pop it. Bam. We got a new coil. And we're gonna use this cap. Like that we got a new coil nice and tight now the problem with this was that inside it just wore out and uh, it was vibrating and shaking around and the, the problem that's going to cause is that'll eventually rub a hole in that stem so to prevent that from happening we uh went ahead and changed the coil by the customer's request dang i think i've got my finger in there for a sec sorry about that anyway uh yeah no big deal this bar waiting on recovery anyway why not so what we're doing is we're pulling out of the uh, the entering line so the two-phase line coming out of the drain valve and the economizer tank into the recovery machine and then back out into our recovery tank we're at 82 almost 83 pounds now now we've recovered the bulk of the liquid we're going to be able to pull from this machine uh from that port and we're down to basically just a straight vapor pull from here which is wonderful because it takes absolutely forever and it, again york if, you, if you're listening or paying attention what would be amazing it would be amazing if you could give us a recovery point that actually recovers all the liquid for, for example if we had a port like down here on the liquid valve and if we had a port on the bottom of the uh, uh, the economizer tank, you know, those would be incredible places to have a recovery point that we could actually get all the liquid volume out to you know, really speed this process up. Anyway, I'm just wishing and dreaming. It's okay. I'll live. I'll get over it. Don't worry about me. Yeah, we're at 83, still clocking away. Uh, word of of caution if you ever use one of these tanks uh, make sure you get a tank adapter so this is a 120 pound cylinder uh, water column 134 that comes out to like 105 pounds of actual charge weight uh, and I highly recommend you know the HVAC school app has a conversion built into this where you can plug in all your numbers and it'll tell you uh, what your weight can be and also, when you buy these at the supply house, make sure that the gasket is actually in there. And I'll show you what I mean. Because they will have, and people will go into the supply houses and, and take them because they lose them. Uh, that little uh, gasket in there is going to make your life very unsettling if you don't have it. So I really, really recommend you make sure you get that gasket anytime you get one of these tanks for recovery. I've talked about this before, but I'll bring it up again now. Until your saturation temperature on that circuit goes below the leaving water temp, which right now is 42. So until that drops below that, you do not have majority of the liquid out of the system. Um, so we're gonna, you're gonna maintain that same pressure as long as liquid is standing. The moment you see this go, you know five degrees or more below you without a doubt have gotten all of your um, liquid refrigerant that you're going to get out out of this system to where you're down to just strictly a vapor recovery at that point so there's always it's a really good metric you can use to know if you've actually gotten the liquid out or not here's our recovery line right now that's another way to know where your liquid level is look at your condens your condensation 
uh, lines and see where those are. Wherever those condensation lines are, that is where you're at in the recovery process in terms of getting all your liquid out in a system like this. All right, well, we got that new sensor in. Good to go, looking pretty. So we're about to get it on pressure test now. Uh, we'll leave that overnight. We got a, the full factory charge out of it. 230 pounds, looks great. Uh, really exciting to see. So we look, we look really, really good. Uh, we're gonna do a pressure test just to make sure. We'll change the cores in the morning get the uh, vacuum going in the morning uh, they'll, hopefully that'll be finishing up around lunchtime or so uh, maybe a little after it won't take us you know less than an hour to or probably right at an hour to charge all the refrigerant back in turn it on let it roll move on to the next one so it's the next morning our pressure test did absolutely perfect overnight very happy with it we're just now finishing bleeding the pressure down so i'll let that completely die down a little more just a word of caution, you always want to be extremely careful, especially opening a large cylinder head like that uh, dryer course. Whenever you have any kind of pressure, even if it's just a small amount still in the system, because that's, 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 uh, that's a lot of volume to try to come at you at one time. Anyway, that being said, once this finishes signed down, it's just about done. We'll change the course, and then we'll be ready for vacuum and get this baby rolling. So the dryers are in pretty good shape. Really happy with them. I mean, this system's not having any leaks, hadn't had any major issues. It just had that sensor fail, so I didn't expect to see anything major going on or significant. But uh, it's just good to see. It's just really, really good to see. The oil in there looks nice and clean. Very, very happy with uh, the condition of this overall. It's really good to see. Good old trusty nylog. So always peel that old gasket out. I've come in behind lots of people that they just put a gasket on top of an old gasket and I, I'm really not okay with that. I don't think that's very good practice. But uh, anyway, on these, so anytime you get these dryers, they come with a set of uh, gaskets. Always use that outer uh, ring, will fit most all of these especially like the 48 core uh, dryers take and just kind of gently depress this down make sure it's nice and seated we'll put another thin bead of nylog over the top of this this will just give it a nice comfortable seal that'll last a long time says eight gets it man it's been no time at all We've maxed that oil out. Uh, he went down to go get another canister. So we, we're going to go ahead and do a live swap. I don't prefer doing it that way. I'd rather shut down. But I am looking to try to get this done as quick as I can. I've got another chiller I am doing a video on as well. That uh, I'm hoping to get started up on today too. So um, if we can get this done by lunch, that'd be great. Because then that other one should be ready by then. And I can get over there and we can do start up on that. And that's two really, really solid jobs completed for me and I can keep rolling get those off my books. Uh, anyway, we've stalled out. We got down to 800 really nice, but that oil is just, it just, I mean, it just needs to change. It's gotten super dark. Um, I was, I intentionally used some dirty oil to begin with, expecting a little bit of a pull down. So that way, I, I, I do that pretty often, right? If I know I've got some oil that's got a little bit of life in it, it's not quite tapped out, I'll start a vacuum with that oil first, let that pull that initial pull down, get all that oil dirtied up, and then I'll change it out, get some fresh oil in there, and then let that finish the, the pull down. Says eight kick butt, did its job. Now we are rolling with the charging. So we've got roughly right at 230 pounds here. Uh, it'll take us a little over an hour. I'd say within about, about an hour and a half, we'll be done with the charge. So we'll be ready for startup so this is one what 105 105 and then we got 20 in there so yep yep yep, yep. get her done so you want to just go ahead and toggle it down shut it off then you'll go 
back into a service mode. Uh, then you're going to cycle back over to the analog outputs, the AOs. And then you want to cycle both of those valves, key in 100% and then enter. You can go ahead and cycle down to the drain. Perfect. When you hear the noise stop, uh, you know they've bottomed out and they're done calibrating. All right, they're done. Now go to zero on both. All right. Now you'll listen for them to bottom back out. They'll be quieter this time because they're not already bottomed. All right, because we already had it at 100%. So you'll hear a little bit of movement and then you'll hear them get louder when they do the final bottom. Right there. Waiting on the other one. Or maybe that was the other one. Okay. All right, so they're both for done now, so we're good. Uh, next, go to system switches. And you're going to cycle system one to on. Here you go. So that's, that's system two. Go back down. Now go on the left. Actually, before we get too far along, go ahead, do the reset lockout. Hit check mark. All right, now go to the left, to the on, and hit check. Perfect. Now go up to system two, and you're going to turn it to off. Hit check. Perfect. Uh, from there, you're good. Go ahead, flip your switch on. It's going to start prepping to start circuit one. And what we're going to be paying the closest attention to out the gate is our suction superheat. So if we were doing a, a full or complete circuit test, we would want that compressor to ramp to 100% speed uh, and then check our readings at 100% load on the compressor. Now, as long as that compressor is staging up and down, that superheat and that drain valve are going to fluctuate like crazy. It's not until it stabilizes that all this is going to really make much of a difference. We got 10 psi across the oil filter. It's good. So we know we're at less than 10 degrees on our approach. This thing's cruising along. MTT guys, make time for your families, make time for your spouse, your kids, they really need you. We're, we've got a really demanding industry, really demanding trade. We've got to make sure that we're making the time for our family at, at all times. As I always say, you're never going to have the time, you're always going to have to make it. But believe me, they need you to make that time, so please do that. That wraps up this chiller, it's done, it's good to go. Uh, YouTube's going to put some random video up that it says you want to watch. Uh, go check it out too. Other than that, I'll see you later.